Today's experiment will give you an opportunity to recap all of your key laboratory skills to make sure that they are of the highest possible standard. You will be working with concentrated acids and bases in this lab class. Make sure you are wearing the appropriate safety equipment including gloves when necessary. We begin the experiment by preparing an approximately 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Please be aware that the sodium hydroxide pellets are corrosive and you should handle them only wearing gloves. Weigh approximately 1 gram of the sodium hydroxide pellets into your plastic reagent bottle on a top loading balance. Then add approximately 100 mL of distilled water to the plastic reagent bottle and mix to dissolve the sodium hydroxide pellets. Once they're dissolved you can then add distilled water up to the 250 mL mark. Try to be as accurate as possible. Pop the screw cap back onto your reagent bottle and mix the solution thoroughly to ensure that you've got an evenly mixed 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Next we'll be preparing the acid solution for titration. We'll be preparing a solution of potassium hydrogen phthalate. Using a top loading balance weigh out approximately 0.4 grams of the solid. It doesn't have to be exactly 0.4 grams and you don't need to know the exact mass that you're adding here. We'll measure the mass accurately by weighing by difference. You're also being technique tested on your ability to weigh by difference so make sure you call over your demonstrator and ask them to watch you complete this. Zero the analytical balance with all the doors shut pop your sample in and weigh accurately to four decimal places. Then transfer the contents of your weighing vial to your conical flask. Notice that there is still some residue left in the vial, that's okay, replace the cap. Shut all of the doors in the analytical balance and ensure that it still says zero and then reweigh your weighing vial. Again note down all four decimal places. The difference between the initial and final masses is the exact mass of solid that's been transferred to your titration flask. Back out in the lab use your wash bottle to wash down the walls of the titration flask. Make sure all of the solid has been washed into the water and then mix thoroughly until all of the solid is dissolved and you have a clear colorless solution. Add two or three drops of phenylphthalein indicator to the solution. Fill your burette with your 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution and then you'll be using this titration in order to standardize to determine the true concentration of the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The indicator is colorless to begin with. The faint light pink color in the middle is the color you're aiming for and the bright pink at the end indicates that you have overshot the endpoint. So again emphasizing you want that first permanent faint light pink color to show you you're at the end of your titration. Note that you don't expect your titers to be the same for each titration. You'll be using a different mass of potassium hydrogen phthalate each time, which will result in a different titer. You will need to calculate your titer to mass ratios for each of the titrations. And once you have three concordant titer to mass ratios, three values all well within 1% of each other, then you're ready to proceed to the next section. Now that we've standardized our sodium hydroxide, we can use that to determine the true concentration of our unknown 0.5 molar sulfuric acid solution. First, we're going to need to dilute that solution. Pour some of your sulfuric acid solution into a clean, dry beaker. Take a 20 ml aliquot of the sulfuric acid, following the usual rinsing protocols, and deliver that into a 200 ml standard flask. Then make that solution up to the 200 ml mark with distilled water using the normal methods, mixing as you go. Use your wash bottle when you're close and a dropper to add the last few drops until the bottom of the meniscus is on top of the line. Mix that solution thoroughly by inversion, at least 40 inversions. Once that solution is prepared, pour a portion of your dilute sulfuric acid into another clean dry beaker. Take a 20 ml aliquot of your dilute sulfuric acid. Be very, very careful to consider your rinsing at this stage and deliver a 20 ml aliquot into a titration flask. Add three drops of bromothiamol blue indicator and proceed to titrate your unknown sulfuric acid solution with the same sodium hydroxide solution in your burette. The bromothiamol blue indicator will present as yellow and acidic solution green in neutral solution and blue in basic solution. If you're titrating carefully to the nearest half drop, you should be able to get your titration to stop at that green midpoint that will let you know that you've reached a point very, very close to the equivalence point. You should repeat this titration in order to get concordant titers. We're looking for three results within 0 0.02 mils of one another. During the practical session, please make sure that you get your technique tests completed. They're an essential part of your learning and they do contribute towards your overall mark. So you'll need to have a demonstrator watch you weigh by difference, use a standard flask, use a pipette and complete a titration. 
For your practical write-up, remember that it's due at the end of the session, so you need to come prepared. You could already have written an aim, a method if you like. You could certainly pre-prepare some of your calculations and decide how you would like to go about doing them, and have addressed some of the questions regarding the error analysis all before you get to the class. If you make sure you have a good understanding of the way the indicators work to help you answer the theory questions, and of course of the calculations involved, then this write-up should pose no problem for you. It would also be a really good idea if you come pre-prepared for the error analysis too. That's it from me. Hope your first practice goes well.